Good evening. Uh, today's topic is transformer, which happens to be the last topic in our chapter, alternating currents. And uh, we have one more topic left in that chapter, which is LC oscillation. But our discussion for today is the transformer, very important topic in our chapter. Now, what is a transformer? A transformer is any device which can transform a voltage from a lower voltage to a higher voltage or vice versa. That is, you could be decreasing a voltage from a higher value to a lower value. So a device which can increase the voltage from a lower to a higher voltage or can decrease it from a higher to a lower voltage is what you call as a transformer. Uh, why we need to do that? We have lots of examples and by the end of the discussion, you will see how important this um, transformer is when it comes to transmission of power over long distances. Now, um, another one simple example I can give you is uh, when you charge your mobile phone, normally uh, your mobile charger requires, let's say, around up to 20 volt. But when you plug it onto the socket, you know, in India, we are supplying power at 220 volt. So a transformer actually steps down the voltage from 220 to 20 volt before giving it to the charger of uh, before charging up your mobile that goes for any device any cordless device like your laptop uh, your mobile phones all of them require only around this uh, 20 volt and so we need to step down the actual voltage the 220 that's the supply voltage to a voltage which is lower much lower before we charge these devices so there we have the step down transformer which is stepping down the voltage from a higher value to a lower value. This a transformer works on the principle of mutual induction of which we discussed in chapter 6. So before I go into this topic, let's refresh ourselves about the previous topic that is mutual induction. In mutual induction, if you remember, we have two coils. One is called the primary coil to which we supply an AC voltage an AC voltage where the voltage is continuously changing and the current is also continuously changing. We also have something called as the secondary coil where we just have a galvanometer, no source voltage. There is no voltage supply applied here. Now, as this voltage continuously changes, V equal to V0 sin omega t, the current through this coil also changes so that the magnetic field here, V equal to mu0 Ni, this you remember from the fourth chapter, so, as this current changes, we know that the magnetic field along the axis of this inductor also changes. The flux we know from the sixth cha chapter is NBA cos theta. So, if B changes, naturally there is a change in flux. So, the induced TMF which we know as minus D phi by DT, the magnitude being given by Faraday's law, the negative sign given by Lenz's law. So, there will be an induced TMF. Uh, in the secondary coil because it, it suppose let's say the primary and the secondary are bound like this on the same core like this then what happens is whatever flux changes are happening here the same flux changes will be linked in the secondary also and because of a change in flux here there will be an induced EMF and your galvanometer will show deflection and this phenomenon where due to the change in current in the primary coil there is an induced current or induced EMF in the secondary coil and this is what you call as mutual induction where we know the EMF is given by minus d phi by dt. On the same uh, note, because of a change in flux here, there will be a EMF induced in the same coil which we called as the back EMF in self-induction because of self-induction. So there is EMF induced in the secondary coil because of mutual induction. There is EMF induced in the same coil where we are changing the current which is called the back EMF due to self-induction. Both cases the EMF is given by minus d phi by dt. So this is basically the principle of a transformer. So now what happens in a transformer is um, we have our supply, we connect a supply voltage here. We have connected a AC voltage. Uh, by the way, uh, DC does not uh, work, uh, transformers cannot use DC because DC as you know provides constant current and if there is no change in current, there will be no change in flux and this whole principle of mutual induction itself is based on the change in flux because of a change in current. 
So we supply AC voltages here. And this is called the primary coil. This is the secondary coil. It is bound on a soft iron core as you see. The number of turns in the primary I have written as NP. Voltage across the primary coil I have written as VP. The number of turns in the secondary coil is NS. And the output voltage that is the secondary voltage is denoted by Vs. Now if the resistance of these coils, these windings, let's assume the resistance is negligible. In that case, the induced EMF across the primary will be equal to VP and the induced EMF across the secondary will be equal to Vs. So if you write an expression for the induced EMF, Es, which we said is Vs, it should be, as we know, EMF is d phi by dt. But then, because this is for a single turn, and if there are ns turns, then this would be equal to minus ns d phi by dt. Let me call this as the first equation. So minus d phi by dt for one turn, if there are ns turns, that is minus ns into d phi by dt. Same way, this is because of mutual induction. Same way, because of self-induction, there will be an induced EMF in the primary coil, which should be equal to VP. This is equal to minus NP d phi by dt. Again, uh, we assume that the flux linked with the primary is the same as the flux linked with the uh, secondary because they are bound on the same core. So, this is the number of turns of the primary. Now, if I divide these two equations, you see that uh, uh, Vs by Vp is equal to um, Es by Ep. This will get cancelled and we have this as Ns by Np. Okay. So, the secondary voltage by the primary voltage is equal to the secondary current, uh, number of turns in the secondary divided by the number of turns in the primary. So, uh, now... If it is an ideal transformer, it means that there is no wastage of power. So, the power input must be equal to power output in ideal transformers. Power you know is equal to V into I. So, if you are discussing an ideal transformer, then it means that uh, VI, that is input power should be equal to the output power. Input power would be VI is VP IP should be equal to the output power which is Vs Is and from this I see Vs by Vp should be then equal to Ip by Is which is what we just wrote as Ns by Np, right. Now let us take an example where the number of turns in the secondary is let me say is uh, 200, okay and the number of turns in the primary is only 100 so that the ratio Ns by Np is only 2. Now, let us also assume for an example that the primary voltage supply is for, uh, let's say, a 220 volt and the current here, let's say the current IP is 10 ampere and the VP is, let's say, 220 volt, okay. Now, if your transformer has 200 turns in the secondary and only 100 turns in the primary, we know that the ratio NS by NP is 2. So from here, what can you say? What will be Vs then? Vs is going to be equal to Vp times into 2. That is, Vp is 220. So 220 into 2, you see it will be 440 volt. Let us see what will happen to Is. Ip we know is 10. Is by Is should be equal to 2, right? So 10 by Is is 2, which means Is is going to be equal to 10 by 2, which is equal to 5 ampere. So you see in this case when the number of turns in the secondary is more than the primary that is n is greater than np. Let me show you that. So if you have the case that we discussed just now if n s is greater than np we saw that the 220 was increased to 440. So we saw that Vs becomes greater than Vp, but then the current which is 10 ampere has been reduced to 5 ampere. So we see that Is is less than Ip. This is what you call as a step up transformer, where the number of turns in the secondary is greater than the number of turns in the primary, because of which the output voltage is greater than the input voltage, but then this is at the cost of stepping down current. The current Is is less than Ip. 
Similarly, we have, suppose we have, let's say, n is less than np. Or let me write it the other way around. Suppose the number of turns in the primary is greater, let's say np greater than ns. Then we know vp will be greater than vs or vs is lesser. Or we may write that vp, sorry, current in the primary will be less than the current in the secondary. So here, if we have lesser number of turns in the secondary, then Vs is lesser, Vp is greater, Vs is lesser and we know that the secondary current will be larger. Okay, so this is what you call as the step down transformer. Now, this is the case, uh, so what we were discussing now was the case of an ideal transformer. So if in actual practice or actual transformers, there will be losses in the transformer uh, and we are now going to discuss three of the losses that can happen in this transformer. See, what we said when we wrote down the equations is, because we have found it on the soft and co, the number of flux lines linked with the primary and the number of flux lines linked to the secondary are the same. That's why we wrote d5 by dt in the, both the cases. But that's not true. There, there can be leakage of the flux lines, which means that the flux linked with the primary need not necessarily be equal to the flux linked with the um, secondary coil. But you can minimize that by getting a design like this, where the primary and the secondary are both wound one over the other on the same core, which means you can neglect or negligible loss of flux lines, meaning flux leakage can be drastically reduced by simply winding both of them on one over the other on the same core. Then another uh, law says, see, these windings, we said the resistance is negligible. So, but then every wire will, will offer some resistance. So what we do is we use, so if it offers resistance, you know, there will be power loss, I squared R, uh, heat in the form of heat, there will be wastage of energy. So what you can do is, see, resistance we know is equal to rho L by A. So what we use is copper, so that resistivity is very low. You can use thick copper wires, so that you keep the resistance low, so that the power loss, that is I squared R, will be also minimal. Then, uh, remember what we did as eddy currents in uh, chapter 6, electromagnetic induction, where we said that if you take a core like this, if you take a core, which is a bulk piece of metal, as these uh, flux changes happen, the core is also experiencing the flux changes, and because of flux changes inside the core, you will have closed circuit currents called eddy currents, which are set up in the core, and what it does to the core is it heats up the core, and there will be lot of energy loss in the form of heat. So we also discussed there that we can minimize this loss by simply laminating, that is uh, taking it in the form of very thin sheets and inserting insulation between the sheets so that these induced currents do not get a closed um, circuit to flow and thereby we can um, minimize eddy currents and wastage of energy in the form of heat due to eddy currents. Also we use this uh, material called soft iron because soft iron actually uh, has very less energy loss and uh, this is a material that in which the energy losses are minimal. So that's why we select uh, a soft iron core. So these are the possibilities of uh, energy losses in actual transformers but I've also discussed how we can minimize these losses. Now um, I told you in the beginning of this topic that uh, the step up transformer and step down transformer it's not, we find it everywhere around us, but the most important uh, application that we have in your class 12 textbook is the, during the transmission of energy. Now, if this is best, uh, I can explain it well to you using the exam, uh, um, exercise 7.25 in your textbook. We have two sums, exercise 7.25 and 7.26, which will help you understand how the step up and step down transformers can reduce the trans uh, by using them we can reduce the power loss during transmission of power so we know power is generated in kerala we have power generation at Yediki. we have a uh, power station there power is generated and it is transmitted over long distances to reach us so during transmission they are being transmitted by wires the wires can get heated up and because of that there will be wastage of energy during this transmission so this particular sum, 7.25, deals with such a situation where in that question they've told us that there is a town 
uh, which is situated at 15 kilometers away from the uh, power station. That is the generator generating electric power. So let's take the power station here. Station here. And at the power station, we have a step-up transformer. So the step-up transformer, we know, here I'm drawing a step-up transformer like this, okay? I'm just drawing number of turns, I told you, if this is a step-up transformer, number of turns in the second, so power, they said that this is generating power at 440 volt. They're asking us to find out to how much it has been stepped up. So this is a primary winding, this is a secondary winding. Because it is a step-up transformer, the number of turns in the secondary is, I have drawn larger. And then, this is being transmitted through, they said, 15 kilometers. And the wire, they said, the resistance is 0 0.5 ohm for 1 kilometer. And at the town, uh, here, when it reaches Kochi, we have these substations where they have a step-down transformer. So, here the step-down transformer, this is the primary. And this is the secondary. So, because it is a step down transformer, number of turns in the primary is more, number of turns in the secondary is lesser. And they are telling you that this town requires a power of 800 kilowatt and the power is supplied at 4000 volt. Here, 4000 volt here. Okay. And the first question they are asking you is, uh, what is the power lost during the transmission? In the wire, I told you, because the wire carries current, uh, there will be um, uh, power loss, I squared R, find the power loss. The second question they are asking you is, uh, if that much is the power loss, then how much should the power station produce? Then last part of the question is asking you, how much is the voltage up to which this has been stepped up? These are the three subdivisions we are going to do. So, to find the power loss in the line, power loss in the line, uh, we use the formula power formula I squared R where R is the resistance of the line and current is a, uh, I is a current in the line. R easy to calculate because you already told us 0 0.5 ohm for 1 kilometer and there are 15 kilometers and there are two wires. So 0 0.5 ohm for 1 kilometer like that 15 kilometers like that two wires which means this will be 15 ohms total resistance. Then current I will be equal to and the current I will be equal to, see we can use the formula power equal to VI or I equal to power by V which is equal to, see power, I told you we are dealing with ideal transformers. If it is an ideal transformer, the power in this, uh, power input equal to power output, right? Vs, Is equal to Vp, Ip, Vz, which means if it is 800 kilowatt here, it should be 800 kilowatt here also. Because ideal transformers, there is no power loss between the secondary and the primary windings. So, I am taking 800 kilowatt here, 4000 volt, which is 4000 divided by 8, sorry, power is 800 kilowatt into 10 raised to 3 divided by 4000, which will give you 200 amperes. Okay, so we have power is 200 amperes. Now, if I am going to find the power loss, I squared R, so we, let me make some space here. So power loss, here will be, uh, this will be power loss in the line, I squared R. So this will be 200 square into resistance was 15, right? So this will be um, 600 kilowatt. So, 600 kilowatt is lost in the form of heat while you transmit the power. The next question is asking you then how much power should this power station produce? So, which means 800 has to be supplied to the town, 600 is being lost. So, a total of 1400 kilowatt must be produced, right? Because if 1400 kilowatt is produced by the power station, while transmission 600 is lost, remaining 800 can be given to the town. So now if you actually calculate the percentage loss, percentage loss would be, in this case, uh, we are, the loss is 600 kilowatt divided by how much you produce? 1400 kilowatt into 10 raised to 3 will get cancelled into 100% which I calculated to be 43%. Okay, 
So, 43% loss in power while transmission. Then the last question they are asking you, how much should you step this up to? Now, if you calculate the potential difference between these two ends, we have the formula V equal to IR. So, current is 200 in the line. The resistance of the line is 15, which means we have 3000 volt, right? Here. So, if this is 4000, potential difference is 3000. So, this should end should be at 7000 volt, right? So, we have uh, a step up transformer here and a step down transformer here. Why? Because we can only produce the power at low voltages and give the term. This they said is 220, supplied at 220. We know all our households get power at 220 because all our devices in India are designed to function at 220 volt. So, we need to keep this voltage which is supplied to household as low. We need to keep this also low basically for safety concerns, lower, lower voltages, safety concerns and also for higher efficiency. So we need to keep this low 440 and 220. But we need to transmit it at high voltages and because of that this 440 should be stepped up to higher voltage, transmitted at high voltage and then step down to give it at 220 to the, um, at the substation it is stepped down to 220 volt before supplying it to household, uh, to uh, different consumers. So, we, we, need, we need a step up transformer at the power station and a step down uh, transformer at the substation in the town in order to achieve this. Now, let me, so 7.26 is another example exactly showing you why we need to transmit it at high voltages. What they told us is, this was 4000 they had asked you in 7.25 exercise. 7.26 is telling you, let this be at 40,000, higher, much higher. We are, this was at 4,000. They are telling you, next you do the same thing with 40,000 volt, very high voltage, okay. In that case, the resistance will still be the same, right, 0.5, they haven't changed that, 0.5 into 15 into 2, resistance of 2 wires here, this 15 ohm. But here the current in this line will be 800 kilowatt. But here you will have a 40,000, one zero extra, 40,000, which means your current will reduce to what? 20 amperes, which means the loss here will be, here we have a zero, 20 square into 15. So two zeros gone. That means we only have a loss of 6 kilowatt, right? So during transmission, we lose only 6 kilowatt. So then, um, uh, how much power should this power station produce? 806 only because out of this 806, 6 kilowatt is lost during transmission. Remaining 800 can be given to the term. Now if you calculate the percentage loss, you will see that this is 6 by 6 kilowatt loss out of this 806 that is produced, which reduces this percentage loss to 7.4. I think I calculated this as 0.74 percent. So you see basically by simply transmitting, so wait, so this is 0.74 percent. Now they ask, so what will this be then? So here you have a 20 into 15, which is only 300, right? So this will be, here it is 40,000, 300 across the line. So this will be 40,300 volt. So earlier, in the earlier sum, we transmitted it at voltages 7,000 to 4,000 across this line. We have now transmitted it at a very high voltage, 40,300 to 40,000. What have we seen? By simply increasing the voltage to very high values, what we have done is, the we have reduced the current so much from 200 to 20, so that the loss in power is only around 6 kilowatt, so that out of the 806 kilowatt that is produced, only 6 kilowatt is being lost as um, heat while transmission. Remaining 800 is given to the town, which reduces the percentage loss to 0.74% from 43%. So this is basically why we need to step up voltages at the power station to high voltages, transmit it at high voltage and low current, so that, and then when it reaches the town, obviously you have to step it down to 220 volt before supplying it to the consumers. So I hope this uh, transformer, the whole topic is actually very interesting and uh, I hope you have clearly understood what a transformer, what does this device do? And um, 
its basic principle works on mutual induction its construction is very simple no movable parts it's just got a primary coil secondary coil wound on a soft iron core you know why and uh, we have the two equations for the induced emf in the secondary and the induced emf in the primary you simply divide it to get the ratio ns by np is equal to bs by dp and this ratio ns by np will give you will tell you whether it is a step up or a step down uh, if ns is greater than np it becomes a step up where voltages are stepped up but current starts current is stepped down if ns is less than np then it's a step down transformer where output voltage is lesser than the input voltage and uh, the current obviously is stepped up then we also discuss the different losses that can happen in the transformer and how you can reduce it also and i hope with this example that we have in our textbook uh, you've clearly understood why we require to why we require a step up transformer at the power station and a step down transformer at the town so that you may transmit voltages uh, transmit power at high voltage and low current so that you reduce the power loss during transmission thank you and good nights